Hey folks, this is Joe Russiello, host of the Sword of the Spirit podcast on Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can, can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So what are you waiting for? Let your voice be heard. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get started today. Pre-millennial, pre-tribulational, dispensational, independent, and standing on the inspired, preserved Word of God, the King James Bible, as our final authority, this is the Sword of the Spirit Podcast, with your host and Bible teacher, Joseph Ruciello. Take your Bible, sit back, and join us as we open and study the Word of God. And now, here's your host. Hey folks, it is great to be with you once again as we open up and study the precious Word of God, your King James Bible. And as always, wherever you are, whenever you are, and on whatever platform it is you find yourself listening to us on, it's always my prayer that you also find yourself in the grace and in the mercy of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Joe Russiello, and welcome to to this Sunday afternoon edition of the Sword of the Spirit podcast. Now, before we get into today's message, I'm just going to ask two things of you. First of all, would you please visit our website, swordofthespiritpodcast.com. And when you get over there, go over to our contact section, open up that little tab, and why don't you send us over a message? I love getting messages from everybody. It's a real blessing to me. It's an encouragement to me. I appreciate the questions. I appreciate the comments, the criticisms even. Uh, so if you could just send us over a message, let us know what you're thinking. If you don't like to use the web forms, that's fine. Cause I don't really like using them either, to be honest with you. Uh, that's why we set up the direct email info at sort of the spirit podcast.com. That's info at sort of the spirit podcast.com. And the second thing I'd like you to do, uh, if you could go over to the website and look for the support this podcast button. And look, folks, if the Lord's been leading you to do it, it's something that you've been praying about, and uh, these podcasts or these live uh, broadcasts have been a blessing to you in any way, and you want to be an active part of this ministry, would you please consider supporting us with a small monthly contribution? You can set that up for $0.99 cents a month, four ninety nine a month, or nine ninety nine a month. And I know the economy's hard. I know uh, inflation being up 485% under this current administration is uh, taxing on everybody. It's, it's, things are tight for everybody. But if, you could, you, but if you could, you could also make a one-time contribution just by clicking on the Waygiver button on our website, and we would appreciate that as well. So why don't you pray about it? And if the Lord leads you to do it, I really would be thankful for it because by your support, whether it's financially or whether it's prayerfully, you become an active part of this ministry. And all of the funds that we're generating are all going to go into programs for Bible distribution, to expand our reach, our outreach, rather, uh, to add on more platforms that we can get onto. Some of these platforms re do require uh, monthly payments. So all of the contributions that we get all go funneled out to those things. So... Uh, any contribution you could do would be greatly appreciated. Now, of course, I'd like to say thank you to all of our current supporters, everyone who supports us prayerfully. I covet your prayers. Your prayers mean so much to me, and I am so thankful for those prayers. Uh, they really are an encouragement, and especially when you guys email me and tell me that you're praying for me. I appreciate that more than you can possibly imagine. Uh, also, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who already f supports us financially. Uh, you guys are a tremendous blessing to me as well. And, of course, to all of our lis listeners who faithfully 
listen and tune in and don't miss an episode and download. I mean, folks, you I've been looking at our numbers. We're already over 1,700 downloads, which to me is absolutely amazing. It's incredible. Our listenership has been increasing and increasing steadily, uh, and I'm thankful to God for that. That is a tremendous blessing. God does provide those things for us, and I, I'm so thankful that he drew you to our show. So thank you so much to everybody who listens. And it's because of the fact that you listen. I know I tout Good Pods a lot. Good Pods is a great platform, and we'll, we'll hear more from them a little later on. But uh, because of the listenership and the numbers that have been going on, we are the number one podcast in religion and spirituality, the number one podcast in Christianity. And now this last week, we were the number one podcast overall, overall on Good Pods. And so that wouldn't have happened, first of all, if it wasn't for the Lord and if it wasn't for him dragging you uh, to this show and uh, and for you guys to being so faithful in listening every single episode that comes out. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me. Now, folks, if you're in the Eagle Pass area and you're looking for a good King James Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church, would you please consider visiting us at First Baptist Church of Eagle Pass? We meet at 664 North Monroe. Our Sunday school hour starts at 10 a.m. Our worship service begins at 11 a.m., and our evening service on Sunday evening begins at 6 p.m. Our Wednesday night Bible study also meets at 7 p.m. For more information, you can visit the church's Facebook page. Just log into Facebook, search for First Baptist Church of Eagle Pass, and once you get over there, you'll find lots of useful information and also episodes of this podcast. Now, folks, you know we're on all the major podcasting platforms. We're also thankful that First Baptist Church allows us to post our shows on uh, their their Facebook page. But wherever it is that you're listening, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends, your family, and your followers. That helps us to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It also boosts the algorithm so that when folks do a, do a search for Bible study podcasts or live broadcasts, it gets, us on the, uh, it gets us into the search results, which is huge. So, folks, continue to like, subscribe, and share it. Make sure that you get it out to your friends, your family, and all your followers and all your social media accounts, and we would be thankful for that as well. Just a couple of announcements before we uh, get into the uh, uh, prayer requests. Let me just get some water here. I'm really dry for some reason. All right. Okay. So, folks, don't forget to tune in uh, every Thursday at 7 p.m. for our Thursday night Bible study. That's 7 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We are going through the five T's, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, and Titus. So this coming Thursday, we'll be getting into uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5. Really, ex- I'm sorry, chapter 4. Really excited to get into that one. Uh, it's really going to be a really good study. Uh, don't forget also, folks, uh, you can find us now on uh, the Contra Radio Network. Uh, you can find their website at crn.best. There are, their shows are all available on Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, all the major podcasting platforms. Uh, Contra Radio Network has been a real blessing. Uh, I've been checking out their programming. I've uh, followed a number of the shows that they uh, broadcast. Really great information if you're interested in prepping and things of that nature. Uh, I found some really useful information out of that, and um, it's uh, directed me on making certain preparations down the road. So I appreciate them, and I think you will too. That's crn.best. Contra Radio Network. Also, folks, don't forget, um, I've been mentioning this for the last couple of weeks, we are going to be launching a uh, another podcast called the Mighty Righty Podcast, which is a uh, political commentary podcast. Uh, we've done three episodes so far, nothing spectacular, just mostly uh, adjusting settings and uh, testing out audio and such. So uh, not the best quality stuff, but it's going to get better, and uh, we are looking to officially launch that on, uh, on or about Election Day. So that's just two weeks away. And before I forget, um, Election Day this year is very, very important. It's very important, folks. So you need to get out and vote. 
Uh, if you haven't already taken part in early voting, do so. Uh, I personally, I'm going to wait for election day to go. Um, but when you do go, try to bring somebody with you. It's so important, folks, that we get enough people out to vote so that this election can't be stolen. So, folks, we need to get turnout. We need to get a lot of people out there. We need to get uh, as many people as we possibly can. So get out there and vote. OK. All right. Public service announcement is done. <laughs> OK. And I know it's not the right podcast for it, but that's OK. That's OK. You know, it's important. A lot of preachers I've heard in the past have told their followers and their listeners and their supporters and uh, church members, uh, you know, that the church doesn't have a place in politics. Well, I, I disagree with that. I do. See, the Bible tells us that we're to be good stewards of whatever the Lord gives us. The Lord ordains government. He gives us government. So therefore, it is definitely within, I, in my opinion, it is definitely within our uh, position to be involved in politics because we have to be good stewards of what God has given us. So how do you be a good steward? You might not want to run for office. You might not uh, have that inclination, but you can get out there and vote. That's the important thing. That's being a good steward of what God has given you. Okay, so again, PSA done. Uh, Folks, don't forget to head over to our website, swordofthespiritpodcast.com, and you could fill out that little web form for the programming announcement email. So what's that for those of you who are new listening? The programming announcement email is just basically uh, an email list that we put together so that you could uh, listen in, I'm sorry, correction, (laughs) so that you can get emails about the upcoming shows, any changes to the scheduling, anything that that you need to know about prior to uh, a show day. So uh, I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to sell your information. I'm not going to load you up with a bunch of stuff that you're not uh, necessarily wanting or needing. It would just be the programming announcements. So uh, head over to our website, sortofthespiritpodcast.com, find that programming announcement subscription box, fill it out, and get on the mailing list. Okay, one more announcement before we get into our first break of the afternoon and then into our prayer list. So, folks, um, we now have in our possession our official Sort of the Spirit podcast coffee mugs. So we have them. And uh, for a $25 contribution, you can have one of these beautiful uh, ceramic black and white with the logo and the scripture verse on the back that says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God from Ephesians chapter six, verse 17. You can have that for a $25 contribution. There will be pictures posted of the cup on the website uh, this afternoon, so you can check it out there. And and in order to get one, would you just just shoot me an email, info at swordofthespiritpodcast.com. Be sure to include your mailing address so I can send it out to you, and I will let you know how it is that you could make your contribution to receive that cup. Also, I'm wearing it right now. We have our Sword of the Spirit podcast T-shirts. Those are or will be available for a contribution of $35. Uh, Also, same thing, just shoot me an email. Let me know if you're interested in that. Pictures will be on the website later on, and I'll let you know uh, how to make your contribution so I can get it out to you. Okay, so we had quite a few little uh, announcements there today, so we're going to just go over to our first break of the afternoon. And after the first break, we'll come back and we'll get into our uh, prayer list, and then another break, and then into the message of the day. All right, so folks, stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening.
Hey folks, welcome back to the Sword of the Spirit podcast. This is Joe Rusiello, and this is our Sunday afternoon uh, edition of the Sword of the Spirit podcast. So we went through some announcements, uh, the usual housekeeping that we need to do. Uh, we paid a couple of bills, and now we're going to get into our prayer requests. All right, folks, first and foremost, uh, we always pray for salvation. That's the number one thing that we uh, need to pray for for folks. And we have a few people on the uh, prayer list for salvation. Now, uh, since this is Sunday, we're going to go through them one by one uh, through our salvation list, sick list, and our general prayer requests and unspoken prayer requests. Uh, so it does take a little bit longer, but um, we're going to get through this as quickly as we can and so we can get into the message of the day. Promise you that we're not going to go two hours like we did um, uh, Thursday. Uh, Thursday was a lot of information to get out. We basically did two studies in one day. So uh, that was a challenge, no doubt about it. But um, uh, thank you, by the way, to everybody who, uh, even though it was a two-hour broadcast that stuck with us through the whole thing, and it was, uh, it was a real blessing, and the, uh, the downloads have been phenomenal on it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, folks, so for salvation, so uh, again, salvation is the single most important thing that um, we need to settle in our everyday life. Absolutely critical that we pray for folks to get saved. And if you're listening and you're not saved, it is absolutely critical that you get saved. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. So uh, we're going to pray for my mom, Diane. Uh, who is in need of salvation. We're also going to pray for my sister, Laura, my beautiful granddaughter, Carmela, and uh, we're going to pray for David as well for their salvation. Uh, salvation, again, is the single most important thing that you need to settle. Once you're saved, you're always saved. There is nothing to concern yourself with after that. You're not going to lose your salvation, but you have to get saved. So we're going to pray right now for my mom, my sister, granddaughter, and David. Lord, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for all that you do for us. Father, we want to thank you so much for the gift of salvation that you've given us through your precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the blood that was spilled for us on the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Lord, that because of that, because of that tremendous sacrifice that we now have access to the throne of grace. Father, today I want to lift up my mom, Diane, to you. Father, I pray that you would just do a work in her and draw her to yourself, Lord, and that she might be saved. Father, I pray for my sister, Laura, for the same. Lord, I pray that you would touch her, that you would draw her to yourself. Lord, that you would uh, spark an interest in her to, um, to uh, get to know the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as her Savior as well. Father, I want to pray for my granddaughter, Carmela. Lord, we just lift her up to you. She's a beautiful little girl, smart little girl. She has a beautiful and smart mom who uh, was saved uh, when she was about 10 or 12 years old and knows the Lord. And, uh, Father, I pray that you would just use her to, uh, to bring the gospel to her daughter, my granddaughter. Father, we also want to pray for David uh, in New York City. We lift him up to you. David needs to get saved. I've witnessed to David many, many times. And, uh, Lord, so I do believe that that seed was planted. Now, Lord, just please, Lord, grow the seed. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name, with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. All right, so we also, on our, our sick list, we're going to pray for, um, as always, we're going to pray for Pastor Martin. We're going to lift him up. I spoke to Pastor Martin yesterday. Uh, we had a really great conversation. Um, I really love him. I really do. He's a, he's a good man. He's, he's a, 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 such a faithful servant to the Lord, uh, a real inspiration uh, to me in many, many ways, and I'm sure many others as well. Pastor Martin had been in the ministry for over 50 years. Uh, he uh, is 88 years old now, and the man still goes out and street preaches every week. He's still active in ministry. He still serves, reads his Bible, I think, 10 chapters a day, is from what if I remember he told me. 10 chapters a day. He has, he has trouble seeing, so it takes him hours to get through those 10 chapters every day. But he does it faithfully. And uh, that's a real that's a real challenge to us. That's a real challenge to us who can, who are healthier, who can go out and do the things that uh, that Pastor Martin does and that others do. And and shame on us if we don't do that. But uh, we're going to pray for Pastor Martin for his eyesight. We're going to pray for him for his blood pressure, for his eczema, for the medications that he's on. 
Uh, and Lord, we just uh, pray that you would give him comfort and grace. Father, we also want to pray for my, for my mom. Uh, my mom is uh, feeling better from the, um, from the uh, I, I think, the upper respiratory infection that she had. And Lord, we just want to lift her up to you. We just, we're just thankful. Lord, we, we, she had her, uh, her infusion yesterday. Lord, we pray that um, you would just uh, bring healing. You would touch her body as well, Lord. Lord, we also want to lift up Bernice. Bernice, as everyone knows, that listens regularly. Bernice is a sister in our church that has been struggling with cancer. Uh, Lord, uh, we lift her up to you. We pray that you would touch her, Lord, that you would bring healing, that you would bring comfort to her in this new round of chemotherapy that she began uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Lord, we pray that uh, you would just work in her, and Lord, that you would bring a healing there. We also pray for her mom as well, for the health concerns that her mom has, and Father, we just lift those those two up to you today. Father, we also want to pray for Alan, who's uh, who's uh, working through uh, prostate cancer right now. Lord, we pray that the treatments that he's on are uh, going to be effective in, in treating the cancer, and Lord, that uh, there wouldn't be any debilitation afterwards. And Father God, we just lift him up to you today. We ask you to give him grace. We're thankful that he knows the Lord as his Savior. Lord, we're thankful that um, that he has his, his place in heaven. But Lord, um, we just pray that you would just touch his body and bring healing uh, to his condition. Father, we also still are praying for uh, Kehlani, for her health concerns. We uh, are continuing to pray for uh, Bernard Mowry, for uh, the Mowers, uh, for Mrs. Hessel, uh, who uh, is recovering from a broken ankle. Lord, we're, uh, we're praying for uh, Sophia as well with an irregular heartbeat. Lord, we pray that, uh, that, uh, that, that, Lord, that you would just touch her, that you would just uh, bring that into regularity. Lord, that uh, it would not be something that would, would impact her uh, tremendously over the course of her life. And, Lord, we just lift her up to you, and we're, we'll be thankful for it. We're also praying for Cassie, who is uh, recovering from a broken ankle as well. So, Father, we commit all of these folks on our sick list uh, to your care, into your hand. And, Lord, we know that you, as the great physician, can bring healing just at the, the, the speaking of a word. And, Lord, we ask that you would speak that word, Lord, that you would bring healing to all of these needs. And we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, going down into the uh, our general prayer requests, um, we're going to pray for my brother-in-law, Jude. Uh, Jude is a contractor based out of New York City, but he does work elsewhere as well. Uh, so we're going to we're going to pray for Jude. He's uh, looking for some some business. Uh, you know, the economy's tight, and uh, you know things are, are, are hard. But uh, you know, he does great work, and I'm not just saying that because he's my brother-in-law, but uh, he does do great work and. Uh, so if you're in the New York area, you should look him up. So we're going to pray for Jude uh, that uh, the contracts, that, that his business uh, would, would increase and pick up a little bit. We're also going to pray for George uh, for the contracts that he's waiting to hear from uh, with the city of Eagle Pass. We're also going to pray for uh, Robert, who is a border patrol, I'm sorry, a National Guardsman serving on the border here in Eagle Pass. Lord, we're, uh, you know, we're thankful for him. We're thankful for his service. We pr- we're going to pray for Robert. Uh, and also for all of his colleagues. We're also going to pray for, uh, uh, for the uh, Border Patrol agents that are serving along the border here in Eagle Pass and elsewhere. We're praying for the National Guardsmen, the local law enforcement, the state law enforcement that are working here on the border, uh, working to keep us safe here. We're also going to pray for Angel and Alex, who are uh, experiencing their first pregnancy as a married couple. And uh, so we're going to lift them up to you as well. So Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for each one that's on the prayer list here, Lord. We want to thank you for for Robert, uh, for uh, serving down along the border. We want to thank you, Lord, that, uh, that uh, you've kept him safe. We want to thank you, Lord, that he has a good testimony among those that he works with. And Father God, we just pray that you would just use him in a mighty way for the cause of Jesus Christ. Uh, while he's in service. And Lord, we just pray also that you would give him an opportunity to get home to see his family. And uh, Lord, I know that he would appreciate that, and I'm sure that they would as well. Father, we also want to pray for all the Border Patrol agents, National Guardsmen, law enforcement that are working along the border. Lord, we pray for their safety, for their protection. We pray that uh, you would just give them the abilities and the skills they need to continue in their, in their, uh, in their field of profession. 
And Lord, that uh, that you would just give them what they need to help keep us safe here in Eagle Pass and wherever it is that they're serving. Lord, we lift up Angel to you as well, Lord, and Alex, and as they're going through their pregnancy here, Lord, we pray that you would just uh, just be a blessing to them, and Lord, we pray that uh, you would help it to go smooth and easy, and uh, when the time has come to be delivered, Lord, that the baby would be perfect and healthy in every way, and we'll thank you for that. We also want to pray for George for the uh, contract renewals that he's waiting word on. Lord, we just pray that uh, that you would just move this bureaucracy through, and Lord, that uh, he would get some resolution uh, so that he can plan out his uh, his next steps for his business. And Lord, we also want to pray for uh, for Jude as well for his his business as a contractor. Lord, we just pray that you would just open up some opportunities there for him, that you would uh, just uh, let him be a blessing to you and uh, through his work. And Lord, uh, that you would be a blessing to him by gr- by granting him these opportunities. And Father, also we want to lift up all of those that have uh, any unspoken prayer requests, anything that's on their hearts or minds that they did not bring forward uh, for open prayer, Lord. We pray that uh, you would just uh, look upon them. You know what their needs are. You know what their concerns are. Lord, we just ask that you would answer those prayers according to your perfect will for their lives. And we will thank you for it. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving, amen. Amen. All right, folks, if you have any prayer requests at all, you can always email me directly at info at sort of the spirit podcast.com info at sort of the spirit podcast.com. And we'll be sure to get them onto our prayer list and, um, and get them out there and mentioned so that the folks here could pray prayer works, folks, people answer, pr- uh, people pray, the Lord answers prayer. And, uh, you just got to put your faith and trust in that. So any prayer requests, email them to me, and we'll get them on the list. And it's always a privilege for us to go through the prayer list. And uh, the prayer list grows. Uh, there are more people on the prayer list today than we've had uh, over the last month, and uh, we're thankful for that. And we're thankful that uh, we have the opportunity to lift them up in prayer. All right, folks. So uh, we don't have any uh, any listener questions to get to today, and I'm sure you're happy about that after it took us over an hour to get through the one from last uh, Thursday. And uh, to the uh, gentleman who sent the email, I, I really do hope that it was a blessing. Uh, and I hope that the information that I presented was helpful to you in your decision. Uh, if you could just uh, shoot me an email, let me know where you are and what you're doing on this. And uh, if there's anything else I can do to help you through uh, your decision process. So uh, thank you again for that. And I appreciate it. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our next break, and that'll give you a chance to go get your King James Bible, grab yourself a cup of coffee or a bottle of water, and when we come back, we'll be getting into today's message, The Agony of a Lost Soul. We'll be right back.
I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after these things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always, by all means. The Lord be with you all. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, 
make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. This book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. Christ is its subject, our good its design, and the glory of God its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is given to you in life, will be open in the judgment, and be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, rewards the greatest labor, and condemns all who trifle with its holy precepts. The King James Bible, God's Holy Book. All right, folks, welcome back to the Sword of the Spirit podcast. This is Joe Rusiello. Uh, we're going to be getting into the message uh, in just a second here. Uh, so let me know what you think. I changed the um, the background music on our King James Bible uh, message there. Uh, I really like it. Uh, I'm surprised that um, I didn't use that one before. It's just interesting, but that's really it's, it's a nice one. I like it. So uh, let me know your thoughts, your comments on it. Uh, the other thing, too, is uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but over if you're using the Spreaker platform and you're signed in with an account on Spreaker, we have an active live chat going on uh, that you can have access to. But you have to be signed in to the platform in order to use it. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, a little while ago, Jason said he's ready to go preacher. Uh, Robert commented that he's looking forward to the message. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, so am I. This is... Um, this is a serious message that we're going to get into. Uh, so would you take your Bibles, your King James Bibles, and head on over to Psalm 88. Okay, Psalm 88. And we're going to get started in that passage in just a second. I'll give you a chance to get there. Psalm 88. And we're going to read uh, all 18 verses of Psalm 88. All right. You ready to go? Okay. Psalm 88, verse 1. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. Free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thine hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee, and I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Selah. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? 
and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou face thy, thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and mine acquaintance into darkness. Our blessed and gracious Father, as we entertain the scriptures today and to our hearts and minds, I pray that they would have a very profound effect upon each one of us. Lord, our resilience and dependence this hour is not upon the logic or philosophy of mankind, nor is it in, in any sense of entertainment that we approach these folks, but from the standpoint of pure Scripture. Lord, your book says that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so we trust the old book under the administration of your Holy Spirit to teach, instruct, to reprove and rebuke, bring conviction and understanding and discernment today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, the language that we just read of Psalm 88, I guess you would kind of say would be a little depressive, wouldn't you? I mean, you you, you wouldn't read Psalm 88 if you needed a quick pick-me-up, right? But it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Now, thank, of course, thank God that there are a lot of uppers in the Bible. There's a lot of comfort and lots of good things that can console and comfort the heart in the Bible, particularly in the Psalms. But this is what you would call kind of a downer, wouldn't you? And I, I, I wonder what it is that brought the psalmist to consider these things that have been put before us. Now, we're not going to turn there, but if you, if you would read Psalm 42, you would find pretty much the same language incorporated into that psalm. It's, you know, some of the same ideas are there. Because what it is, it's, it's, a, it's a disquieted soul that's crying out and saying, Oh God, I feel afflicted. I sense that I'm in, a, I'm in desperate straits and I'm in immediate jeopardy of being separated from you. What the psalmist is talking about, and, and ultimately uh, the only conclusion that you could arrive at, is, is when he says over in verse 4, he says, I'm, I'm counted with them that go down to the pit. In verse 5, where he says, free among the dead like the slain that lie in the grave, and other, other uh, verbiage that he uses throughout the psalm, it, it becomes abundantly clear, abundantly clear when you compare Scripture with Scripture that the psalmist is talking about going to hell. Hell is a strange word. Hell has become a word that's, that's popular in every venue in America except the pulpit. Now, I've noticed in, in listening to, to preachers and, and reading different things that we have over the last few years kind of, you know, shied away from talking about hell. And what we do is we, we tend to try to cloak it in, you know, better terminology. One of the favorite things that preachers say, and, and I'm sure I've said it too, to be honest with you, and I, I'm sure I have, so, but what a lot of preachers say, in, instead of saying that people are going to hell, sometimes we'll say, eternally separated from God. Well, that's true. That's true. That's very true. But you see, to the average hearer, it doesn't have the same punch. It doesn't have the same impact as you stand in jeopardy of going to hell. That it, it, it just doesn't sound the same as, you know, you may be eternally separated from God. That sounds more like a divorce, right? <laughs> Well, I, I don't know that, you know, that does sound, that doesn't sound so good, but you know, I'll, I'll manage, I'll get along, I'll figure it out. So I started, th started to think about this whole thing, this, uh, this whole separation issue. I mean, to be sure, eternity in hell is a separation from God, right? So let's examine that. Let's examine that and let's see what it means to be separate from God. 
And we're going to look at a lot of verses today because we need to allow God to speak to us through his word. So let's begin in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Now, if, if you're new with us, we look at a lot of Bible around here. You just don't give up. Hang in there until you get the hang of finding all these books. I mean, how many of you listening have never really read or studied a Bible or really uh, were looking at a Bible before you got saved? Did all of this just come instantly to you? No, you had to learn, right? And it takes time to learn. It takes a little time. Do you know how I know that you can learn the books of the Bible? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Children in third grade Sunday school learn the books of the Bible and they can recite them on request. All 66 of them, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, off they go. Now, if a third grader can do that, you can certainly do it. And secondly, I know that saved men that, that know and could recite every rule, every fact, and every piece of trivia about Major League Baseball or football, or hockey, uh, and, and, and what have you, you know, from one end of the book to the other end of the book. They can quote Kelly's Blue Book to you in a heartbeat. Hunting regulations. I mean, if you can learn that, you can certainly learn the books of the Bible. All right, did I give you enough time to get to Luke chapter 22? All right. Luke 22 and verse 42. Now, this is Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane just prior to his crucifixion. Luke chapter 22 and verse 42, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And beginning in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Now, I learned something when I was preparing this message. I learned something that I, that I previously didn't know. According to my concordance, this is the only occurrence in the entire Bible where the word agony appears. The only occasion where the word agony appears. And I, th I thought that was an interesting word. And I thought, well, you know what? Um, it only shows up one time. I'll do a word study on it. So I looked it up in the concordance, and that's it. You know, that's the only place that you see it. That's the whole word. It doesn't appear in any other place except right there. I mean, that in and of itself speaks volumes. Now, notice how the Holy Spirit phrases it. Not in agony, in an agony. So the article indicates that he was totally engrossed, totally encompassed in an agony. Well, what was the agony that Jesus was enduring? What was the agony that caused him to perspire great drops of blood? Not like blood, blood. He literally sweat blood. Now, isn't that an interesting phrase? Don't we use that to this day? in our own terminology and vocabulary, you know, I sweat blood over that thing, you know, uh, blood, sweat, and tears. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. Jesus did. But Jesus did. What was the agony? What was the agony? He was anticipating a separation from God the Father. It was on the cross where he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was literally separated from God the Father because he took upon himself our sin. And it created, just in the sense of the anticipation of that event, such an agony that he literally perspired blood. Now I said all of that by way of introduction to what I'm going to talk to you about today. And that is the agony of a lost soul. It begins with the agony of separation. So let's consider some of the things that an individual who goes to hell is separated from. When we talk about that eternal separation from God, look with me over in John chapter 5. John chapter 5.
John chapter 5 and verse 21. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. So when a thing is quickened, it's made alive. And the Son has the power to do that. All right, turn over to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 6, and I want you to see something here. You see, God is consistent in this theme. John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. One more time, John chapter 11. John chapter 11 and verse 25. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. All right, now, so you know what's, what the Bible's teaching here? It's teaching us that life is in God. Life is in Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So then anything that's separate from God is what? Anything that's separate from God is death, right? It's not life, it's death. So do you know what hell is to be? Is, is, do you know what to be in hell is? It's to be in death, but it's a walking dead. It's a walking dead. We're reminded of the story of the rich man who went to hell and lift up his eyes being in torment and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, for I am tormented in this flame. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. The guy's dead, but he's a walking dead. Do you ever think about where they come up with the idea for zombies? You know, the walking dead, right? That's where it is. So let me show you a little bit more about this. Turn over to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. All sense of life as we know it. Life and vitality, the very sense of excitement, the very sense of looking forward to something, the sense of something fresh and new and vibrant will all disappear when an individual is separated from God. That's hell. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. So do you see that? They're dead, but they're, but they're standing. They're walking dead. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Do you know what you need to do above everything else? You need to make sure that your name is written in the book of life. So you say, well, I'm a church-going guy. Well, that doesn't write it down. You say, you know, I'm trying to be a good person. I'm sorry, that doesn't write it down. Only Jesus Christ has the authority to have your name included in the book. So you'd better get in contact with him. you better get in touch with him. So to be separated from life, the opposite end of the extreme is death. God is a God of absolutes. Everything God does, he does in an absolute kind of way. Relativity is introduced by man's faulty thinking. Einstein talked about the theory of relativity. So somehow we've tried to apply that to spiritual things, and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Let me give you an example. There's an interesting verse over in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 16. Since we're in Revelation, let's just take a quick look at it. This is just to emphasize the point of complete extreme opposites. There are certainly times in your life that you felt more alive than other times. There have been times in your life where you've been more excited about being alive than other times. 
Now imagine with me in your mind's eye the time of life when you just sensed the fullness of life to the highest proportions you can think of, and then imagine your deepest and darkest sense of depression. You know, a time when you just said like Elijah, I wish I were dead. I wish I were dead. Those extremes in your life and in mine are minuscule on the scale of extremes as far as God is concerned. In Revelation chapter 7 and verse 16, this is a fascinating verse. This is a verse about heaven and the people in heaven. Verse 16, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Well, that's kind of a strange verse, right? Nor any heat. Heaven is a place with no heat. You know, scientists call that absolute zero. And, you know, they, 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 they keep tinkering around with that. I don't think they've still figured out what exactly absolute zero is. The last thing I read about it said that they estimated absolute zero to be negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. I would say that's fairly frosty, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, but then again, they may change their mind someday. Who knows? It may be 800 below zero, but who, really, who cares? The point is, is that absolute zero is the absence of all heat. And it says here in the verse, nor any heat. Now, I know some of you thinking about it already. I hate to be cold, but you know, don't worry about it, okay? You're going to have an incorruptible body. You're going to have a body that's not affected by heat, cold, or any other elements. You're just going to feel an always cozy 72 degrees, you know, Palm Beach kind of thing. So then why does God think it's necessary to tell us that heaven will be a place of no heat? Because God is scientifically correct. Absolute zero is where things get so frozen that there's no molecular movement. It's called suspended animation. All of those little molecules and, and those atoms that move around, the protons and all that stuff, all those things eventually produce decay. When God gets a thing so cold it just freezes, it doesn't decay. That's eternal. Heaven is eternal, isn't it? Now, if that's true, and it is because the Bible says so, if heaven is a place of the absence of heat, absolute zero, then what do you suppose hell is? I mean, on the other end of the spectrum. Are you with me? Are you following? What's absolute heat? I have no idea. It beats the fire out of me. You know, you'll always find somebody that'll say, you know, you know, you Bible believers always talk about hell and hell is a place of outer darkness. How can you have outer darkness when you have fire? Fire creates light. I don't know. But God's figured the thing out. Folks, do you really think that we know what all the elements are? Think about that. Just think about that. So what I'm trying to show you here is that Every sense of life that you've experienced will be as absolutely on the negative end of the scale that you can imagine, and 10 million times beyond what you can imagine. There is no life in hell because we have voluntarily separated ourselves from that which gives life and is life. He is life, and all life consists of him. Separation from all of that Separation from all that's life. Only death is in hell. But that's not all. Look with me over in Psalm 62. Psalm 62. And I think some preachers, and I'm just guessing here, it's only speculation on my part, but I think that some preachers enjoy preaching on hell. I don't like it. I, I really don't. You know, I have a message prepared that I've never delivered on hell and what's it like. It's a hard message. And believe me, there's a myriad other subjects that I'd rather preach on. You know, I like humor. I, I appreciate sarcasm. But it's really hard to put any kind of humor or sarcasm in a message about hell. I mean, what in the world kind of a joke could you come up with that, about hell that would be even remotely appropriate? I mean, I'm sure I could find some good mother-in-law jokes, but then again, I'd like to be able to sleep with both eyes closed, you know? 
I also have another message that I have outlined, which I've never delivered on heaven. Believe me, I'd much rather preach that. And I have them grouped together, right? Uh, the first message of the little series would be about hell, and then, and then the second part of the series would be on heaven, but you have to go through hell to get to heaven. All right, Psalm 62. Psalm 62, verse 11. God hath spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. So when an individual is separated from God, not only is he separated from all that represents life, he separates himself from all that is power. The opposite of power is utter and absolute weakness, insufficiency, and no accomplishment. One of the great things of life is a sense of accomplishment. Wouldn't you agree with that? I mean, doesn't it depress you a little bit if you go through a whole day and at the end of the day you feel like you just didn't get anything done? Nothing accomplished? You look at the day, you say, man, that was a total bust. I got nothing done. The house is still as dirty as it was before. Or whatever your scenario might be. There's a sense of accomplishment that goes along with the human psyche that's absolutely necessary. And the more people divorce themselves, willing or, or unwillingly, from that, the more miserable they become. In hell, that's impossible because it's a place of no power, no strength, no ability, no attainments, no achievements, no accomplishments, nothing, because God represents all power. The very fact that you can lift a table, the very fact that you could split a cord of wood, the very fact that you could, you could lift a baby, the virtue of the fact that you could push a vacuum cleaner is because God gave you the strength and the power to do it. Without that power, there is no accomplishment. I can't even imagine in my wildest and most wretched dreams thinking about living through all eternity without any achievement at all. Nothing. None whatsoever. But that's not all. That's not all. When a person is separated from God, they're separated from all wisdom. Look with me over in Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. Now, is it wrong for preachers to stand up here and, and gloss over hell and substitute hell for eternal separation from God? Well, maybe not if we explain what that means. But if you really come to understand what eternal separation from God means, maybe hell would become more acceptable. We would probably rather hear that. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. James remind us, reminds us that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to men liberally and abradeth not. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So where does all wisdom come from? Ultimately, all wisdom comes from God. He's the fountain source of all that's intelligent. He is and embraces and embodies and gives forth all real intelligence. So therefore, I would have to conclude that hell is a place of utter stupidity. I mean, does stupidity get on your nerves? It, it sure does mine. When people get on the, ner on the news and they make a stupid comment, you know, oh, hell is a place of stupidity, insanity, and no logic or common sense. I had a friend when I was in college, and honestly, she was a sweet soul. She really was. She really was. But you know something? She didn't have the sense to come in out of the rain. One day she came to me, and I was sitting having lunch with another friend of mine. She comes over, and she sits down with us, and she says, she looks me right in the face. She goes, can you teach me common sense? I said, there's no hope, man. There's no hope. I mean, she knew how to basically function in life. But if God is the giver of all that's intelligent and we choose by rejecting Jesus Christ to separate ourselves from all that's intelligent and wisdom, can you imagine what hell would be like? A place of absolute insanity and mental bedlam? Utter chaos? No sense. No logic of any proportion. You know, common sense is a valuable thing. And we've set a great deal of that aside in America. More and more, you see jobs that are attainable by people 
uh, that are unattainable, I should say, by people unless they have a certain kind of a college degree. And that really irritates me. It does. Now, I believe in going to college. I believe in getting a good education. But do you know that there are a lot of people with a whole lot more sense and can accomplish a whole lot more than a lot of these people with three or four college degrees? Just by what they've learned by the trial of life, you know, trial and error and accomplishment. Now, we put a great deal of premium on a lot of the wrong things. And we see so many people today with lots of degrees and no common sense. It's frustrating. It's agonizing. It's depressing. And it angers me sometimes. It should anger you sometimes. Can you can you imagine and spending uh, can you imagine spending eternity in a place that embodies that and nothing else? Man, it makes me shiver just to think about it. I am so glad that heaven is my promise. And that's not to say that I'm the smartest light bulb in the box. I don't think that at all. But don't you appreciate a little intelligence and wisdom and sense? Folks, we're going to take a short break here. And when we come back, we'll continue on. In the meantime, flip over to Psalm chapter 50. Psalm 50, and that's where we'll pick it up when we come back from this break. We'll be right back. found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, 
thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. All right. Welcome back, folks, to the Sword of the Spirit podcast. This is Joe Russiello. I know the sound uh, dropped off there for a second. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but uh, my, uh, my monitors and everything here flickered for a second. So I apologize for that. But uh, we are back. I was going over some of the messages in the chat room here. Uh, Jason uh, said, uh, good message so far. I've heard that a lot. Eternally separated from God. And you're right. It does soften the punch. Well, it certainly does. It certainly does. Uh, but we're going on here. Now we're going to be in Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Uh, we're going to pick this up here. Uh, we were talking about intelligence and wisdom. I think preachers really have kind of inadvertently and not necessarily maliciously or purposely have kind of fallen into a trap of sometimes thinking of uh, you know other words or phrases uh, for hell, and this kind of goes to what we were talking about with uh, Jason here uh, to make our speech more palatable or more acceptable and you know not quite so offensive. So then we adopted this phrase uh, "separated from God." But the thing is, though, I mean, it's okay to use it if you explain it. If you're going to say it, explain it. Psalm 50, verse 1. Psalm 50 and verse 1. The mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. 
Look in verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. So do you know what this, these verses here tell me? These verses right here tell me that, that all of wealth is God's. From that one verse, from that one verse, there's a great children's chorus that says, He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth in every mine, the rocks and the rivers and the hills, and the sun, the sun and stars that shine. Well, what's that based on? That's based on those verses we just read. So in other words, God is the controller and the ultimate owner of all wealth. So if you separate yourself from God, where are you? If you separate yourself from God, where are you? You're in the most abject poverty imaginable. In hell, there are no possessions. In hell, there are no shopping centers. In hell, there's no Walmart. In hell, there's no HEB. In hell, there's no diesel pickups. In hell, there are no gun shows. In hell, there are no new clothes. In hell, there's no dentist office to get your teeth fixed. In hell, there's no doctor's office or hospital or clinic. In hell, there's no shoe, shoe store. In hell, there's no optometrist. In hell, there's no hairdresser. In hell, there are no homes. In hell, there are no paved streets. In hell, there are no sewage disposal plants. Hell is a place of abject poverty because God is the controller of all that wealth. To separate yourself from God is to separate yourself from all that is represented by God. Just think in terms of extreme opposites, just like you know the, the heat and the cold. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many what? Mansions, right? Mansions. In Revelation, we're told that the streets are pure, transparent gold. What an extreme. What an extreme. To separate ourselves from God is to separate ourselves from all that we know as wealth and possessions. Let's look at another one. I just have a couple more that I want to give you. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Someone said, you know, preacher, you believe in hell? There's no scientific evidence of hell. I think there is. I really do. I think there, I think there is science, scientific evidence of it. But that's not the message of the day. I do think there's scientific evidence of it. But the fact of the matter is, why, why run the risk? Why gamble? If there was even a 5% chance of hell, then I would try to figure out a way to stay out of it. Just a 5% chance. Let's assume just for a moment, and, th and this is an incorrect assumption, I know, but for sake of conversation, let's, let's assume that there's only a 5% chance that the Bible is right. Now, how many of you have been in a car accident? The national average for a car accident is about 2%. Okay? So you have a 2% chance of getting into an accident, and you have a bunch of people who have been in one. right? So what if there's, what if there's only a 5% chance of the Bible being right? Do you want to run the risk? See, that doesn't make sense to me. Even if there's a 5% chance. Now, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of, the, of knowledge of good and evil. Now, I want you to notice a particular word there. I want you to notice the word pleasant. The Lord created pleasant things. Now, trees are the particular subject here, that he created pleasant things. What the Lord does is he creates pleasant things, and all things are at his pleasure. You have to enjoy the trees. They're pleasant to look at. You have to enjoy flowers. Remember, Jesus made a comment over in Matthew chapter 12 about how God arrayed the lilies of the field and the grass of the earth. 
Stop and think about a place that has no pleasantries whatsoever. No trees, no grass, no flowers, no ornamental shrubs, nothing that's pretty to the eye, nothing that's pleasant to be observed, no pleasant conversation, no pleasant creatures. Everything there is unpleasant to the extreme. No blue sky, no colorful sunsets, no fragrant smells. Nothing that's perceived in any way, shape, or form to, to bring even the slightest level of pleasure to the inhabitants of that place. Everything in that place is distasteful. Everything is abhorring. Everything is wretched. What a place. What a place. Now, lastly, let me give you what I think is the worst of all. Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And I hope by now so, that some of you have thought that, well, if this was true, that it's so important that we do everything we know how to do to keep people out of hell. And that is the thrust of this message. It's imperative that we do all we know how to do to keep people out of hell. Is hell a place of separation from God? Yes, it is. But let's define the term. Let's explain exactly what that means. A place where we're separated from all life, from all power, from all wisdom, from all wealth, from everything that is pleasant. And then finally in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 17, Romans 5, 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of the one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Righteousness and Jesus, and Jesus Christ are synonymous. He is the righteous one. Righteousness embraces that which is pure, that which is good, that which is holy, that which is untainted with any wicked human motive or devilish idea. Righteousness embodies that which is pure and good, and hell is a place that is absent of any sense of righteousness. It's a place that is totally encompassed with greed and wrath and bribery and cursing, hatred and malice. That's hell. There's no righteousness there. Now, whether you and I realize it or not, we all benefit from righteousness. We all enjoy the benefits of righteousness. You know, the law is discussed in the passage in verse 20. Verse 20 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. In other words, what the law demonstrates to us is a sense of righteousness. And if we cross that line and become disobedient to that sense of righteousness, there are consequences that must be paid. Let's just put that into the civil arena. Let's talk about laws that we all benefit from. Speeding laws, for example. How many of you have ever driven in a state where there's no speed law? Nevada used to be that way. I think Montana's speed limit is now 80. How would you like to be driving on the same road with a guy who's alcohol impaired and there was no speed limit? Any inhibition in his mind is now throw aside. And that puts you and your family in greater jeopardy, doesn't it? So we benefit from the law. What if it wasn't a law? What if it wasn't against the law to murder? Well, we'd all be sleeping with 12-gauge shotguns next to the bed, wouldn't we? What if it wasn't a law against bur what if it, it wasn't against the law to burglarize somebody's home? It's a sense of righteousness that establishes those laws that all of society may benefit. 
Now let's eliminate all right, let's eliminate all righteousness from that from a scenario. Let's just take it all away, and then what do you have? You literally have dog eat dog. You've got chaos that literally extends the wildest dreams of human imagination. No righteousness. What you have is a place of constant filth, wicked imaginations, hate, vulgarity, and cursing of every description constantly. I mean, how many of you have ever been around somebody that had a, had a really foul mouth where every third word was a curse word? Doesn't that just wear on you after a while? I mean, after a while, don't you just want to say, shut up? Can you imagine what hell would be like? There's going to be no inhibition against that. Hell is a place of no righteousness because it's a place that is separated from any sense of righteousness. There's an agony of unbelief in hell. There's an agony of hopelessness in hell. But I think that the worst part of of all of that is that there's just no sense of righteousness. As a society, you see that we're sliding down that slippery slope by great degrees. And anybody with any sense knows that things just aren't the way they used to be. You know, when television came out in the early 50s, it was black and white, and there were just a few shows on it. Most of, if not all of the shows, they they felt compelled to demonstrate a moral to the story. There was a moral to the story, and usually, usually it was, you know, it doesn't pay to lie. It doesn't pay to deceive your parents. You know, Lucy, you lied to your husband. Now look at the mess you got yourself into. There was always a very subtle moral to the story. Now, more often than not, there's a bad one being perpetrated. Do you know what that tells me? America is headed to hell. America is headed to hell. Don't you go there. Please. Don't go there. Trust what the Bible says. Trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God, save me from hell. You know, some people say they were saved because they, they became overwhelmed by the love of God. Good for them. Good for them. I am confident that there are many, many, many people like that. I wouldn't dispute that testimony at all. But maybe I'm just a hard case. I'll tell you why I got saved. I'll tell you why. I heard a preacher preach a scathing message on hell, and it so consumed me, I said, I don't want to go there. I got saved because I was terrified to go to hell. Maybe you got saved for another reason. Whatever it is, I'm glad that you're saved. I'm glad that you know the Lord. But let me tell you something. Hell is good enough reason. A guy said to me one time when I had given my testimony, he says, I don't think you should be saved because of the fear of hell. Excuse me? (laughs) I think that's a pretty good reason. (laughs) You know, I'll go for that. And I did. I went for it. Separation from God. Let's define it. It's not good. It's really not good. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for the time that we spent together here. I want to thank you for all of those that have been listening live. I want to thank you for all of those that will be downloading the message later. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would use this message in a very mighty way in somebody's life today. That they would not just view hell as a separation from God, but they would view hell for what it really is, the most awful place imaginable. And the fear of going to hell would compel them to seek the Lord Jesus Christ, their Savior. Father, I pray that today, and I beg you for that today. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Well, folks, I want to say thank you so much to everybody that has tuned in. That brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, episode of the Sword of the Spirit podcast. It's a heavy message, no doubt about it. Absolutely a heavy message. But it it needed to be said. It needed to be preached. 
And I'm very thankful to each and every one of you that have tuned in and listened. listening to the sword of the spirit podcast if you have any questions or comments visit our website at sword of the spirit podcast.com and send us a message or email us directly at info at sword of the spirit podcast.com until next time god bless you and good day